Image Trace in Lightburn is one of the more useful tools that we have available. It's also very easy to use compared to what you may be used to in other software. Uh, so in this video, we'll cover the basics and then we'll show you how to use the more advanced options. So what is Image Trace? Um, image Tracing is essentially converting pixels into vector shapes. If you've ever zoomed in on an image, uh, like a JPEG or a PNG file, you'll see that an image is just a grid of shaded squares. Uh, these are called pixels, and each one of them will have a brightness value or a color assigned to it. Um, there are no shapes exactly, it's just a regular grid of dots with shading. This is great, and for example this image the laser would have no trouble engraving, scanning back and forth and turning on and off as it encounters dark areas, but the problem arises when you want to cut something like this out. There is no path for the laser to follow to tell it to cut the outline of this, for example. And so Image Trace allows you to recover shapes and vectors from an image like this. Uh, to access the Image Trace feature in Lightburn, select the image and either go to Tools, Trace Image, uh, use the hotkey Alt-T for trace, or you can select the image, right click, and go to Trace Image in the pop-up menu. And you'll be presented with Lightburn's Image Trace dialog. Uh, in this window here, you'll see purple outlines showing me the vectors that Lightburn has found in this image. And often, this is all you'll need to do. Uh, bring up the Image Trace, check it to make sure that the result is what you want, click OK, and you're essentially done. Um, this image now has a vector outline dropped right on top of it in the same place. Uh, Lightburn will do that for you. And you can see here, I'm only seeing the wire outline of this image, but if I switch Lightburn to showing me the filled rendering, you can see that they match nearly exactly. And if I zoom in, I'm no longer seeing those jagged pixel outlines. I'm seeing nice smooth curves here on this shape on the left. And that is because this shape is now made of curves and lines instead of individual dots as a grid. And so this can be engraved the same way that you would an image, but it can also be cut. Uh, I can recover these vector lines. Um, if I switch back to my standard wireframe view, um, I could ungroup this, take this line and set it to cut, for example, so that I could cut this out, I could offset it, I can do other operations that I couldn't do on the original image. That's the basic operation of Lightburn's Image Trace feature. Uh, I'm just going to remove this one and go back to this. Show you a few more advanced options. Um, so first of all, when you are looking at the image here, uh, sometimes it can be difficult if the image is busy uh, to see the lines that the software has created for you. Uh, if you click the Fade Image button down here at the bottom, uh, it dims the image so that you can more easily see the vector shapes. Um, this is a great way for you to spot check things, make sure that everything looks right. There's also uh, show nodes or show points, so you can see the individual nodes or vertexes that the software is adding to your shape. Um, you can also see whether things are curved or not. Uh, so for example, here at this tight corner, you can see that the software is making a curve there. If the software creates shapes that are too sharp or too smooth, you can adjust the smoothness value here. Pixels don't have curvature exactly, so the software is trying to figure out the best possible shape that fits your image uh, intuitively, I guess. Um, and it's there's not always a perfect answer. So here, for example, it's chosen to make a sharp corner. That looks correct. Here it's chosen to make a round shape. That's probably correct. Uh, sharp corner here, sharp corner here, and so on. But there may come places where the decisions aren't quite so clear. Um, and so you can choose to increase or decrease the smoothness value here, which adjusts where and how those decisions are made. So for example, this corner right now is smooth. If I lower my smoothness number enough, it becomes a corner. And so you can tune this value to match the image. Uh, and that's useful sometimes if you're trying to capture small text or things like that that have sharp corners where there's not a lot of detail and the software is having a hard time making the right, the right call. 
Uh, there's also a value here called optimize. This controls how many nodes get added to the vectors that it creates. And so if you set this down to zero, um, you can see that it's created quite a few points around this shape here, for example. If I increase the optimization value, um, you'll see that more and more of those nodes get discarded. Um, and sometimes it may affect the quality of the fit. Uh, so for example, at an optimization of zero, this is the best possible outcome that the software is able to come up with. As I increase the optimization number, um, it discards more and more points, but you'll notice that in some places it doesn't quite fit as well as it did before. So here, for example, it's starting to slip off of the shape a little bit. As you lower this number, it'll probably increase or get better. And see there, you can see now it's a better fit. So play with this. Um, in most cases, the default value of 0.2 is a good balance between the quality of the fit and the number of points in the output. And so you probably don't need to change it much, but it's good to know that it's there. Um, there are other options as well. Um, in most cases, you'll go trace image, spot check it, hit OK, drag the original out of the way, and or delete it uh, if all you want is the vector traced result. So there's a helper that will make that just a little faster. If I go to trace and I say delete the image after tracing, when I hit OK, Lightburn has removed the bitmap for me and now I'm just left with the trace. So it's a simple thing, but it saves you a step. There are a couple of options in the trace feature that are a little more advanced and we'll show what those are and how they work. So the first one is threshold. Threshold controls which portions of the image are things that you want traced and which portions will be discarded. This is not something that you would likely trace. This is just a gradient, but it's an excellent demonstrator for the threshold and cutoff values. Right now, by default, Lightburn is set to a threshold of 128. That's half of the possible 255 shades of brightness. So it's going to capture everything from pure black uh, up to uh, 128 brightness, and anything from 128 up to 255 brightness is discarded. As I slide the threshold downward, I'm now narrowing which brightness values Lightburn is catching or tracing. So now it's only going to trace around the darkest blacks, for example. Um, as I increase this, it's going to trace more and more into the gray areas and potentially all the way up to white. So if you have an image that has shading or shaded edges like this one, if I zoom in, you can see that there is gray here in these edgings. Anti-aliasing or shading was applied to this image to make it smoother and adjusting the threshold will let you catch more or less of that detail. Similarly, there is a cutoff value and the cutoff chooses where the brightness starts. So it's effectively the opposite of the threshold uh, or the bottom end. So with these two controls, I can slide threshold all the way up to pure white and bring the cutoff value up to the middle. And then I'm only tracing now from mid gray to the brighter white. This allows you to narrow in on specific shading regions within your image. So going back to our cartoonish rhino here, if I open the trace, if I was to want to trace this gray section and this independently of the rest of the image. Let's say that I wanted to uh, take this image and do a couple of passes over it and engrave this gray with a different pattern than the rest of it. I can capture that by playing with my threshold slider until I'm catching one part of it. So now I'm gonna turn the, the fade on so I can see what's being caught right now. So I'm grabbing from purest black up to some level of gray here. Um, as I pull this down, you can see this line pops from here to here. So I'm crossing the threshold here where it captures from this dark black in the original image to this darker gray. Um, and so that's, that's a good spot there for my uh, threshold. And now if I bring the cutoff up, I'm going to skip over these black areas and just capture these grays, which is actually what I want. 
Now, you'll also notice that because this image has shading, there are spots here that fall into that same band of gray that are being caught as well, and I don't want these. Now, I could manually edit the resulting image after I'm finished, but there's an easier way. Lightburn has this ignore less than value here. This basically says that any isolated region that is smaller than this number of pixels gets discarded. So right now it says anything smaller than two gets thrown away. So anything that's a single pixel in size will get discarded. Uh, that's obviously not large enough for these. So if you increase this, say make it 20, now you'll notice that all of those little strays here are gone. If I bring it back to two, you can see there's a bunch of them here. Set it back up to 20 and those are gone. There's still one here, so 20 is not quite enough. So let's bump that up again, say 40. I'm going to fade this again so that I can see a little easier where my results are. I don't, oh, there's one. All right, so let's just go all the way up to 100. That looks good. I've got only the regions that I'm interested in capturing. I turn off the delete image after trace because I want to do another pass over this hit OK, and my first result is now captured. Now I can select the image and go to trace again, and this time I'm only interested in just the black outlines, so I'm going to pull my threshold down until I'm capturing all the black, hit OK, and now I have the dark shading and the black outlines as two separate pieces. And if I grab this one and pull it away, you can see that that other section is still there. Um, I can make this a different layer, for example, um, change the fill setting, change the power that's being used, and so on. And so I could engrave this image as a two-tone with multiple passes and get the shading effects that I want. So I'm undoing a bunch of things here now so I can show you a few other options. Um, Trace image also allows you to define a boundary. So if I was only interested in capturing, say, the face of this and not the rest, um, if I click and drag out a rectangle, the trace feature will only capture what's in that rectangle and ignore everything else. And so that can make uh, editing your result or capturing only the things you're interested in much simpler. It won't be perfect. You'll see I'm catching a spot down here and a little bit up here that I don't want if I'm just trying to catch the face. But it means a lot less editing of the end result if you are capturing from the camera, for example, uh, and the resulting image has a lot of noise or a lot of uh, visible bed area, things like that. So uh, dragging a rectangle out allows you to narrow in what you are capturing and uh, makes the editing process simpler after you're done. If you accidentally drag the rectangle, you can single click anywhere or double click to clear it. Um, you can also edit the rectangle after it's been dropped by just clicking and dragging on any of these points. And you'll see that it makes a, uh, makes a much tighter fit. So I can grab just the nostrils, for example, uh, just the eyeballs, and so on. And there's what we're left with. And so this would be much faster to edit out than trying to edit everything as a result of that trace if I didn't want the whole thing. Now there's one more feature of the trace in Lightburn that's worth mentioning. If you do a lot of work with handwriting, for example, uh, old recipes, things like that, uh, engraved onto cutting boards, there's a feature in the trace that can help you. So looking at this, you'll notice that the lighting across this photo of a handwritten recipe is not uniform. It's not consistent. And so it gets it's light up here and it gets darker down in the corner. And a traditional trace is going to have a hard time catching just the writing. So as I move the threshold value around, you'll see that it's catching all of this dark area here because it's dark. Um, if I pull the threshold down enough, now I start losing the lighter bits of the text. And that's a problem, uh, and it's a problem in most software. However, Lightburn has a feature called Sketch Trace, which looks for sharp edges and transitions in lighting 
and ignores the overall lighting. And it's actually designed for recipes and handwriting. So now this threshold value becomes sort of a detail size or how much difference there is between the dots for it to be considered an edge. So if I scroll this up, uh, you'll see that it's starting to skip smoother areas of the image here, but it's still catching most of the handwriting. If I scroll it down far enough, um, it'll actually start capturing the noise as well as the handwriting that I'm interested in. And so through a combination of adjusting the threshold value here and uh, tweaking this ignore less than number, you can do a lot of handwriting recipes uh, fairly easily. Um, so this one, I'm, I'm still catching a fair amount of the detail over here. Um, I've got almost all of that handwriting well captured and recognized. Hit OK and drag this away. If I preview the result here, oops. Um, so this actually has captured the outline, um, which is going to require some editing. Or, a little bit easier, I can just put a box around the whole thing. And now if I preview, turn off the show traversal moves, you can see that the end result is actually quite legible, readable, and you know, with a little bit of editing would be pretty clean, uh, especially given the quality of the original image. So none of the strange shading is in here, and with a little cleanup this would be quite appropriate for an engraving. That pretty much covers it, so thanks for watching.